Hello and welcome to a new episode of How Do We Get There? I'm a big fan of science fiction and it is fun to ponder over the endless stories taking place in distant star systems. Having a Romulan ale while meeting all these strangely humanoid species. Or even fight the Empire in a galaxy far far away. These stories all have one thing in common. They assume the existence of a technology that enables faster than light travel. Otherwise it would be impossible to get even to the closest stars around us within a reasonable amount of time or even a human lifetime. There are more realistic science fiction series like The Expanse, but it mostly takes place within our solar system. Let's look at Voyager 1 again as an example for a space probe that already left our solar system. It has a speed of about 17 kilometers per second, but it will fly for about 40,000 years now before it passes within 1.6 light years by the star Gliese 445. No pit stops on the way, nothing in between. Right now the star is 17 light years away. But at that time in the future, it will be only 3.6 light years away, as it is rapidly approaching. So the star does most of the traveling, not the probe. There is also the project Breakthrough Starshot, where we want to send a computer chip with huge light sails attached to it, to the next star, currently about 4 light years away. Speeding it up with a square kilometer array of lasers on the Earth with a combined power of 100 gigawatts, bringing it to 15 to 20 percent of the speed of light. The trip would take only 20 or 30 years. It could take a picture and send it back to Earth, which would take another four years. So getting from one star to another is not easy and maybe physics itself will keep mankind from getting very far as it might turn out impossible to go faster than light. I received a comment regarding exoplanets recently saying it's all quite interesting but a bit sobering when you realize how far away they are. One thought that keeps me up at night is what if mankind will never go anywhere? Maybe it goes extinct within a few hundred years for whatever reason. And the only trace that there ever have been intelligent creatures in our galaxy will be wiped out when our sun blows up to a red giant in a few billion years, swallowing this little dot that has been our home. If we really made attempts to go to the stars and inventing a warp drive turns out impossible, Spreading our heritage around a significant number of stars in the galaxy would probably be impossible. Or would it? Actually, there is one idea of a technology that is maybe not a hundred years away that could enable us to put parts of mankind on planets around all of the hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy within an incredibly shorter amount of time. It is the idea of building a von Neumann probe. How many of them would you need to conquer the galaxy? You would need one. So how does this work? First it heads towards a planet of another star. Let's say there is not an unrealistic speed involved, let's say it's just 1% of the speed of light. Therefore it takes a few decades, let's say 50 years. And on arrival it gathers natural resources and builds a factory. This factory produces two other probes identical to the original, which are heading to two other star systems. In the first generation we have two, then four, then eight, then 16, then 32, then 64. It is an exponential increase. After only about 37 generations, you have reached a number of probes that is about equal to the number of stars in our galaxy. Being generous, it would take about 500,000 years and the probes would be around all of the stars in the galaxy, which equals about the time of the history of mankind until now. A time span so incredibly small that it vanishes in the history of planet Earth. 
dinosaurs, for example, ruled for 150 million years. So in just a fraction of that time we would have put our signature on the whole galaxy. Of course there could be more to the probes than just being everywhere. What else could they do? They could carry an encyclopedia containing a record of mankind. Maybe it advances early intelligent life forms. So we could spread our heritage. This is an idea that was part of the movie Odyssey 2001, which was about strange monoliths found on the moon and around Jupiter, which did exactly that for mankind. They could just gather information and send it towards Earth. If we are still there, this would be an endless stream of first-hand data. The factories could begin to terraform planets whenever possible, thus making huge parts of the galaxy habitable. Also, they could plant seeds of DNA or simple microbes, therefore starting an evolutionary process on the planets. If we don't make it, at least we spread life around the galaxy. I know you will say that's not space travel. No humans will go anywhere. Well, maybe there's an option too. If the probes carried human DNA strains or just information on how to assemble them, maybe humans could be grown in artificial wombs and would be born on these distant worlds. Of course it would require advanced artificial intelligence raising these first children. We are not there yet, but it is something that seems not impossible. One movie exploring the concept was a recent one called I Am Mother. Of course, one spooky question remains after exploring these concepts. If even the simpler version of this technology seems around the corner, and it would really only take 500,000 years to put technology all around the galaxy, why has no intelligent race done this already? Considering the universe is 13.8 billion years old. I'm on 1415 and the real world is incredible.